Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. This is going to be Old Iron Tidbits number three, and it'll also have my 5,000 subscriber giveaway. My Tidbits videos are just going to be a bunch of little clips of different projects that I work on that don't really justify its own video. Um, I hope you enjoy. Okay, I just want to uh, thank all my new subscribers and my existing subscribers. This will be the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, I'm kind of late getting to this. I gave everybody till Christmas. Anybody that sent an email got in the drawing. Um, once again, I, I have my daughter Amy that's going to be helping. She's going to be drawing the ticket. And once again, I, I appreciate it very much, and uh, hopefully I can bring more content out. Thank you. And when I say more content, I guess I'm meaning uh, more content that people find interesting and they get something out of. And here for the 5,000 giveaway, I wanted something that just about anybody could use, and I think anybody could use cordless tools. Okay, I got my daughter Amy here. She's going to help me out, and she's going to be the one that picks the ticket. Uh, what we have, when I had my 1,000 subscriber, I only had 46 tickets, or 46 entries, which each entry has two tickets. Uh, this time I have 180 entries for the 5,000, um, minus the one winner, so there's 359 tickets in there right now. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on, mix them all up, and uh, see who's the winner. In the, my first thousand giveaway, I kind of showed building this squirrel cage out of an old uh, air cleaner. It does a pretty good job of mixing the tickets up. All right, whenever you think it's good to go, Ames. Okay, let's reach in there and see who we have. Okay, we have 999-100. Okay. Nine 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 one hundred. Glenn Phillips. Glenn Phillips, congratulations. You are the winner of the five thousand giveaway. I will send you an email. Just wanted to congratulate Glenn once again for being my 5,000 subscriber uh, winner. I did send him an email. Um, I haven't heard back, so if anybody knows Glenn Phillips, maybe they can shoot him an email or something, letting them know that he was my winner. My last video was a month ago and it showed a pretty big tool purchase um, where I've been buying a lot of uh, tools and equipment from a certain machine shop for about four years now and this is probably the last stuff that I will get from them we went back and picked a big compressor up for my uh, for my friend Mike and while I was there I grabbed a bunch of a uh, bunch of goodies here these are all uh, just miscellaneous stuff but those are all 40 taper so they'll fit my uh, K&T vertical head. After the one trip I made where I bought the Vidmar cabinets and all the tooling that went in them, um, I was talking to my buddy Chuck at Outside Screwball that uh, he made a couple trips there. And he was telling me that they that he seen in one of their scrap bins that they threw away some boring bars and some parallels. And, so of course when I went back there I uh, I noticed the stuff still in the scrap bin. And this was a two and a half inch boring bar I dug out of the scrap bin. They had another one that was probably almost four inch by about three foot and way too big for anything I'd use it for. 
now here I got it cleaned up in the blast cabinet and it is a homemade boring bar that was never finished the one line on top I think was just their center line um, but one side still needs to be drilled for some set screws and here they had a uh, you know an old equipment light you know I'm always grabbing grab any <laughs> any old lights I'm always tend to uh, try to grab I haven't showed this one yet, um, but I had a chance to go with a friend to his friend's shop that was just full of stuff and do a little picking. And while we were there, I came across this 60 ton weaver and of course grabbed it. And it'll be a future project. A few years ago, I picked up this Grenard number no. four Arbor Press four model. Um, these are a seven ton press and I bought it complete the counterweights handle the wheel on the left totally complete but it had a big break right there as you can see well that led up to this next purchase last week I had a gentleman that used to part-time work at the company I work at he knows I buy old stuff, and he came by and said, you know, hey, are you interested in a couple of things? I, I got one old Arbor Press that's probably like 100 ton. Well, it looks like it's 100 ton, but, but right there you can see no damage, no breaks, nothing. But it was missing all the original um, weights and everything. Anyway, I got it for a song. And I'll take all the mechanism off of this one, put it on mine that was already broken, and eventually, you know, send it down the road. I was going to do a nice repair on mine, but if I can have an original one restored without any welds or repairs, I would much rather uh, have that. So this one just kind of fell on my lap. I think I showed a picture of this in one of my previous videos, um, but it's a 99 F350 with the 7.3 power stroke, 6-speed manual uh, that I picked up, and it'll be my new iron hauler, and here, one of my uh, uh, co-workers, he picked this up from his boy, it's a 75-gallon tank, and I thought, you know what, that would be nice to put in the back of the other truck. Um, one thing about being on the road, if you're on the road with a diesel and a trailer and stuff, you know, uh, it's just nice to carry some extra fuel with you. And here's the original seat out of the 99 truck. Of course, one of our employees kind of ran it toward it. There was uh, nothing left. And it's not very easy to find seats for these darn things. So I decided I wanted to change up and go with the bucket seats rather than the bench seat. It's kind of nuts what they want for good used seats for trucks, even if they could find them. Uh, so I ended up finding some out of a 2019. Uh, they came out of an F-250. And you can see there the, av the airbags deployed. So I will have to repair those, but the materials in good shape that everything's new enough that they're not going to be falling apart and I get to use my dad's sewing machine my dad passed about eight years ago and this will be the first job I'll actually use the machine on my dad and I were very close and there wasn't too many projects where my dad wasn't uh, a part of uh, helping me out in any way he could um, here we have a old crane laying in the weeds. This is something that my boss bought almost 10 years ago. He bought it with an auto crane and I fixed the auto crane up already and we sold it. And this one here, um, it was more work than he wanted to deal with. So it just sat in the weeds. And what's a service truck without having a crane on it? So I ended up getting it from him. Uh, for a very cheap price and the next couple clips will just show uh, 
just trying it out but you can see here where they torched the whole bottom off of the original plate and I have no idea why they would have did that okay here I got it in the shop and kind of blew all the gunk off of it and grass and uh, just kind of evaluating uh, what it's going to take to try it out you can see it still has the power cord coming out the bottom so basically I'm just going to hook up the uh, controls to it which it did come with the controls and uh, you can see the old plastic bushing kind of melted away uh, when they torched it off the bottom it has a chain that uh, you know for the swing on it okay here we're uh, I got a battery sitting on the ground I got uh, just going to it and trying it out and the winch this particular crane used a one winch the winch part worked great the uh, the boom up and down uh, the pump was coming on for the swing, but it wasn't trying to activate. I couldn't tell if it was just stuck or if one of the uh, electric solenoids was hanging up a little bit. But all in all, uh, everything was looking really good on it, and uh, I thought it had great potential. It is a 4,000-pound lift. All right, here I got it apart, stripped down, ready to start repairing the bottom. You can see here where I've already cut off all the garbage on the bottom. I went ahead and went a little deeper on those because you could see that one, one of them had a big hole kind of notched in it right there. So I went ahead and went a little deeper with it just so I didn't have a hole I had to fill in. And then I'll machine a bronze bushing to replace the fiber bushing right there. And then just cut plates and uh, start building her up. Right here, the bushing protruded down three quarters of an inch, so that that particular one was going to hold the bushing in place to keep it from dropping down. Now everything was extended about six inches overall from what it was, and that's just to give me the clearance so it'll swing over. Uh, over the toolbox when it's uh, mounted in the bed. Here I'm just measuring up for the size of the plates and it, it's just quarter inch plate. Here I'm just cleaning up some uh, rust off of an old junk, a quarter inch uh, lid off of something, but it was just big enough where I could get the four pieces um, cut out of it. And here I'm over at the fancy plasma table getting ready to cut out the, uh, the four pieces. On the plasma torch, I like using the drag tip for this kind of stuff, and it's uh, got a three uh, three eighths inch offset from the edge to the center, and I just take it to pick just a piece of three eighths shim stock and just kind of use it for a quick little guide.
at least plates three of the sides get welded up one of them doesn't so I'm just kind of cleaning up one of the edges uh, just to make it look a little prettier Here I'm getting everything tacked up into place and as I'm uh, doing those welds right there they're wanting to shrink up and tighten up on the bronze bushing which that's what I want. I want them to tighten up on the outside of the bushing and when I'm done I want the inside to spin on the inside part the idea of the bushing which you can see here right now it does. right there you can see but as I weld it up it's gonna shrink so before I welded it up I pulled the bushing back off of that into the the thicker shaft and then it'll get honed out after it's all welded up for those of you that may not be familiar with the sun and hone um, I call this a sun and truing hone and you can see it's got the little rack that goes inside that spreads the stones out. You got two stones that do the uh, you know the grinding per se and then you got the two uh, guide pads and it just really helps for uh, giving you a really nice true hole uh, when you hone it out. So once it's all welded up then I'll be able to go in there true up the hole you know and have a nice fit. Making a little progress. The bronze bushing I use is one of the, uh, like an oil light or oil impregnated bronze bushing. And you can see the weld heated it up and kind of started oozing oil out of it. But otherwise, it uh, it welded up pretty good. Of course, got to do a little little grinding and a little paint always makes everything look a, a lot better. But it's ready for the hone. The next clip's going to show the the base right there I'm gonna cut out all that existing top part that went to another another crane and then uh, weld the crane to that base okay if you've watched any of my videos before you've probably seen seen some of the Yenbacher engines that we mess with and here what we have is a tool for uh, turning over the engine it goes in the holes in the flywheel, which, which the pins are 11 sixteenths, and on this particular one's broke off. That just drives in a big handle, and then you just stick it in the hole of the flywheel for turning it over. And uh, a customer needed me to make them uh, four more. And here I'm uh, using some P20 tool steel, which has roughly about a thousand tensile strength. Um, but yet it still machines really well. So hopefully it'll work out good. I could pretty much make as long a chip as I want. You know, the stuff's pretty amazing, you know, where it just don't break a chip. Depth of cut, 200 thousandths. Overall, off diameter, 400. If this is something critical, you would uh, drill into the shaft and use your live center. But I tend to take the uh, easy approach out. I just take my little hook bar and just slightly put a little bit of pressure on it to keep it from chattering.
Here I'm just kind of blending in the radius with my Fordham tool. And when I cut the radius, um, I kind of had to uh, do the old trick where you're working the cross feed and the uh, carriage handle at the same time, you know, and try to get it, you know, as close as you can. Here's the tool I use to do the uh, radius. To do a form tool on this tool steel, I'm not sure how it would have worked. So like I said earlier, you know, it's kind of playing around, moving the carriage at the same time you're moving the cross feed. And, you know, get it close and then clean it up with the Fordham tool. And here's the broken ones and the other ones ready to go to the customer. Well, after 80-something videos, I finally broke my uh, my little mount for adjusting my uh, my phone. I use my phone on all my videos, and I bent up a few of these aluminum brackets. So here, I just had to take a, that little piece of hex. Uh, it was already made up. It was a standoff, and I just had to machine the end of it to fit the Noga. And this is my old phone. I had to replace it. It started acting up. <clears throat> but anyway, I can just take the phone and just slide it in and out real easy. Well, here I'm doing another quick job for um, same uh, my favorite customer uh, for the landfills. And what they have, there's your crane. What they have are these blowers. And what these do is pump the landfill gas to the engines, the big Yenbacher engines run on the landfill gas. And I've got two in the back, this and another one that i got to rebuild, and then I needed to make a bracket for, uh, you know, for removing them. That they could just bolt to the top of the pump and then just uh, stick the forks in it to pick it up. If you've noticed that I don't use much oil when I'm drilling holes at the drill press, you are exactly right. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't like the mess. And if you turn a bit, keep it sharp, turn a bit slow enough, it'll be just fine. You only burn them up, you know, when you spin them up faster. Um, but for me, I just don't, uh, don't like the oily mess over everything. These blowers have a little coupler on the top that's probably six to eight inches uh, thick or tall so once you remove it then this bracket will just slide in and bolt right to the blower and then you just uh, stick the forks in it and lift it up and pull it out all right this was kind of a patch job uh, kind of emergency let's try to, uh, to get it fixed so we can uh, use it kind of deal uh, but they lost a bearing and went into the blower and started shaking and rattling real bad and we wanted to try to do a patch job as far as you know replacing the, replacing the bearings and uh, see what happens and at the same time we put new bearings in the 100 horsepower electric motor also um, but with these pumps here it's kind of critical because you know in the shops that are geared up to do them there's several of those impellers right there that are all balanced they slide them all on the shaft together and then they balance everything you know before they assemble a complete unit and if they're out at all you know they'll end up shaking pretty good and we did get it back together okay but it did uh you know it still vibrated you know so they had to get another uh, blower coming Here I got one of the bearings for the electric motor on the induction bearing heater. Just heating it up to drop it on. Hot, hot.
This clip was around Christmas time. I needed to take one of our trucks with the bigger crane out and set this pig in a natural gas pipeline, uh, which of course all the pipelines are underground. And this, uh, this pig is full of computers and sensors um, and it just crawls around uh, the pipe looking for any uh, flaws or bad areas in the pipe. And it was supposed to be in the ground for about maybe a week and it ended up spending uh, almost a month you know crawling around the pipes but here's right there is where we had to set the pig in and then basically the natural gas pressure is what uh, repels the pig and this was about a month later uh, at the site where we're actually going to retrieve the pig the pig's right inside of that section of pipe right there I didn't get any good footage of removing it um, kind of crazy thing They're, they don't pay me to film for my YouTube channel <laughs> but anyway I try to get a clip of uh, different stuff now and then and here we are we moved it to one of the sites where they could pressure wash it off really good before it went back to Texas you know and if you have any really technical questions on exactly what all the sensors and stuff are uh, you're talking to the wrong guy that's above my pay grade but I can tell you it's a very expensive piece of equipment right in the center is where the computers are and then there's just sensors all over the place and then once they get it back out of the pipe you know then they go plug in and determine you know if there's any bad areas that need to be uh, addressed I did a two-part series on uh, beefing up my old trailer but this is an old trailer I bought from work also that definitely needed to be beefed up frame wise axle wise spring wise and anyway um, pretty much been using the heck out of it still got to finish it up uh, still got to do some uh, better fenders but otherwise it's been real handy so far well next I was able to give a friend a helping hand uh, many of you guys might know this person. Here we're unloading the shop in Benicia. Uh, you guys may recognize the guy on the forklift. Um, he goes by Tom. And anyway, he bought some property and needed to move his shop. And I had a truck and trailer. And I had a friend my friend Mike with the truck and trailer so as soon as I mentioned uh, my friend Mike that I was gonna give Tom a hand Mike jumped right in and said well I'll bring my trailer too and there's Tom so anyway um, you know here we're just loading loading up stuff uh, getting ready to haul it to his new place Here we got a decent load on the trailer and we have this 2,000 pound welding table and arbor press in the back of the bed of the truck. And here, this is the next trip where we're loading up his uh, 6,600 pound milling machine onto the trailer. Here before we set it down on my trailer, my trailer is quarter inch diamond plate so we slid some plywood under it. All right, you're good. Come on down.
and we made it safely to Tom's new place and he had a forklift waiting uh, to unload the mill and the uh, and the lathe anyway he has a beautiful place and I'm sure we'll be showing a lot of clips in the future Okay, I know this video is getting long. Uh, hopefully you guys are uh, hanging in there. Anyway, I need to machine these diffusers. They bolt directly up to a turbo, and after running for a while, there's times that they'll loosen up and hammer out. This is an older clip of me removing broken bolts in one of the turbos. And I forgot what video that was on showing it, but anyway, I needed to get all the broken uh, studs out of there and put new studs in it but it's just a metal to metal fit and the diffusers he wants me to uh, surface them so they get a nice uh, a nice tighter metal to metal seal and here I got all the new studs in here just starting in the bead blaster Now here I had to bring these home uh, to my home shop uh, just to get them in the big lathe. That's a 26 inch swing uh, with a 20 inch four jaw chuck on it. I was hoping I could just push the big flange tight up against the chuck, tighten it up, and face the other end. But as you can see, it was just way too far out to that. So I had to manipulate it in the chuck a little bit, you know, just to get it a little bit closer before I machined it. Yeah, that surface that was just cooked from being up against a turbo was so hard. I couldn't, I had to take lighter cuts, otherwise it just knocked the edge right off of the carbide insert. If any of you guys have followed any of the Monarch lathe videos I did, there it is sitting, uh, patiently waiting its turn to uh, have me have some time where I can get back at it. Now, if anybody wants to know what the insert that is, I will be honest, I have no clue. It was, uh, I bought a lot of carbide inserts here recently, and it was just uh, in it. And it was loose and not in the box. But it did a great job.
here just showing some of that super super hard scale trying to get it off is kind of a tough All right, here's another set I need to do. This time I'm gonna take the grinder and I'm gonna grind all that hard scale off uh, first and it should machine a whole lot easier. And here we got it ready to machine. Here our yards getting a pretty good collection of uh, remanufactured Gimbacher engines. But we are loading that one right there up onto the truck and out of here. And we got the 75 ton crane to do it. Once again, I want to congratulate Glenn Phillips as my 5,000 subscriber giveaway winner. And I want to thank all my new subscribers and my existing subscribers for taking the time to check out the channel. Uh, looking forward to uh, making more content and putting out more videos. Once again, I appreciate it very much.